It is update time for the Waterbox Marine X 60.2. Let's go. But if you are new to my channel, don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on that bell so that you're notified when I'm uploading new videos. And as always, such a huge thank you to all of my subscribers, sponsors and supporters. It means the absolute world. So thank you. Right, here we are one and a half years of having my Waterbox Marine X 60.2 and three months in of having it as an anemone only tank. I can't believe I just said that first go. Right, for those of you who have followed for a while, you'll know I started off with intentions of having this as a beautiful SBS tank. If you wanna know why I changed my mind and went to an anemone tank, watch this video. I'll leave the link up here. Um, it'll explain it all and also explain why this is now the Jake Adams tank. So since that last video, I have had quite a few uh, anemone additions <laughs> and it is starting to look really nice and full. One of my anemones has actually split. I tried to get video of it splitting um, and then it ended up taking way too long. Turns out it wasn't until the next day that I actually made the complete split. So it would have had my phone going for a very long time trying to get to that on camera. But anyways, so that was my first anemone split that I had happening over here. The anemone actually got really, really big and then it ended up splitting. So um, that was really cool to watch. And I now have 12 anemones in this tank. And honestly, it's just starting to give me the glimpse of what it's going to look like in the future when it's completely covered in anemones. I just can't wait to see what it's going to look like. And these pink skunk clowns are in heaven. <laughs> And even though they have so many anemones to choose from, they still tend to squabble over the same anemone. <laughs> I have mentioned it in a couple of my update videos that I have bubble algae in this tank. And so far I have just been using manual removal to try and get rid of that out of the tank. But I've had a few of you suggest to me to go and watch Sam Parker's video and also Gallery Aquatica's video on getting rid of bubble algae using this product. Um, so I went through and watched their videos. They are awesome. I will leave the links to their videos in the description. So yeah, they look like really effective and simple methods which um, don't include having to do so much manual removal. So I'm super keen to give that a go. And I'm gonna follow the instructions that they put up um, and see how we go. So I'll definitely keep you posted. I've just ordered that. So hopefully it comes this week and uh, my next update video, hopefully I'll be able to show you a bit of before and after by using that product. It's honestly mesmerizing watching them swim all through the anemones. Even though there's just the two, I have considered putting a few more extra pink skunk clowns, but they are known to be aggressive. So I just thought I'd leave it as the two. Um, if I wanted to add more, I probably should have done that all at once um, at the beginning. But I'm still pretty happy with them, even though I don't see them very much because they literally don't move from the anemones. They just, unless it's food time, they come out. But um, they absolutely love it in those anemones. And also for anyone wondering how I got the fish to host the anemones, I used this method of holding a little clear tube. It was actually a water bottle that I found and cut off the top and the bottom. And I held that above the anemone so that when the fish went into the water, they went straight into the anemone. And it worked an absolute treat. The fish instantly hosted the anemones. So it's, um, in my opinion, a really effective way when you're first introducing the fish into the tank to encourage them to swim straight into an anemone. As soon as they enter the tank, it was extremely effective in getting them to host it straight away. So I um, highly recommend that for any of you that have clownfish, because it's a pain in the butt when you go to all this trouble and have these beautiful anemones and they go and host the top corner of the tank or something like that. So, so yeah, I found that to work really, really well. Um, and yeah, it's just, Nothing cooler, honestly. And I just love that it really doesn't matter where the anemones move. They've got the whole tank to themselves. This is just gonna be an anemone tank. So really, really happy with just letting it do its thing. It's been a very chilled out tank just doing its thing. Equipment wise on the tank, I have turned off the skimmer um, just because it's only the two clownfish in there. The whole time I've had this tank, I've struggled with low nitrates and low phosphates. So you know what? Now that I've turned it off, I've just let it settle and it's doing so much better. Um, I'm not getting any more dinos or anything like that. I'm literally just feeding the fish and then once or twice a week, I will go and feed um, a little bit of prawn to my anemones. They seem to like that. It's honestly just what I had in the freezer. I've got those little frozen cubes as well. So sometimes I'll defrost that and then just putting it directly into the anemone. But honestly, other than that, the most maintenance really I've had to do on this tank recently is getting rid of that bubble algae. So once we get on top of that, this is gonna be absolute breeze of a tank to run. So really excited to 
get that nipped in the bud and yeah I've stopped doing so many water changes with my six foot tank I tend to be quiet you know I do huge water changes for the six foot tank and then I come here and then before I know it I've changed like almost all the water because <laughs> I just get a bit carried away with my water changes so maybe every now and then I might take a couple of scoops of water out put some new water in um, but honestly, I'm really trying to dial down on that just because I have been struggling with low nitrates and phosphates. So another piece of equipment I'm going to be adding onto the tank is this Inkbird temperature control. Inkbird sent me this to give it a go. I've never used it before or on any of my tanks. I've never had a temperature control, so I thought it'd be quite interesting to see how it goes and I guess it's just an extra backstop to sort of um, stop the tank from overheating. This one is also the heating and cooling one um, which interestingly I have these fancy power boards down here. Honestly they're rubbish. <laughs> My brother-in-law actually warned me about them and said yeah they're rubbish because you know the power might have tripped or something and they didn't turn back on and I came out and I was wondering so I've got my heater and my power head connected to those. So um, my heater was off for like a few hours or I think it might have even been closer to a day. Um, and I was wondering why the anemones, you know, weren't flowing so much. And yeah, my power board had turned off and I didn't even know. So um, yeah, if I had this plugged in, this would have notified me that the water was getting cooler. So um, it would be good to have this as a backstop. I'm going to be changing that power board over right away. Um, honestly, sometimes it's just... Simple is better. <laughs> Just get an old, good old fashioned power board that's, you know, not trying to be all technical and um, connected to your phone. So, so I'm gonna be changing that over as well. So just a quick overview on this. Um, you plug your heater into here which then connects into here and you set on the little control here what temperature you want your tank to sit at. So if for whatever reason your heater gets stuck on or anything like that, this will force it to shut off so that your heater doesn't just continue to keep heating the tank. So yeah, it's kind of there to notify you and you know, sort of protect your tank from any heating failures and to make sure that your tank stays at the optimal temp temperature that you're wanting it at. So I'll be adding it into this tank and it'll be super interesting to see how it goes long term and also the different things it can tell me about the tank and also the temperature fluctuations that we've got happening on the tank. So, so super keen to give that a go on the tank. I'll definitely keep you posted on that in future videos once I've had it up and running for a little while. So yeah, really excited to see how this tank turns out and see like it's only been up as this setup for three months. So, you know, imagine how many anemones I'm going to have towards the end of the year. I just can't wait to see what it ends up looking like. So super awesome to be able to document it on YouTube and see what happens. So, so as always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget if you are new to subscribe and we will see you next time.